Hi guys, I'm Ashley, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be giving you part two of my July wrap up. If you didn't see part one, I did upload that yesterday, so I'll leave a link to that down below if you haven't seen it already, but I did manage to read quite a lot in July, so decided to split it into two different videos. There will be less books in this video, but I do have more to say about them because they are bigger, I guess. <laughs> and I do also have the stats in this one. But about those, I'm not going to do the before and after expectation versus reality style stacks, which I usually do at the beginnings because most of the things that I read and expected to read were actually digital. So there's not much use in me holding up a stack because most of it won't be there. <laughs> Just before we do get into the stats though, I will quickly mention the books that I didn't manage to get to on my TBR because this is an interesting one. So we have these three books, The Fifth Season, House of Salt and Sorrows and Star Daughter. However, I am actually currently reading Star Daughter. I've pulled this over into August because this is a review book that I've got and I need to read it before it comes out. And The Fifth Season is the book for my Patreon book club for July and August. So I've also pulled this one into August. It's in my August TBR. So I will again be reading this one soon. I just didn't manage to get to these two before the end of July. So the only one from my TBR which I haven't read and don't plan on reading immediately afterwards is House of Salt and Sorrows which was the myth take book of the month for June and July. Honestly I just ran out of time and very luckily for me one of our moderators Bryony ended up coming in and taking my place for the live show so thank you so much Bryony for doing that for me because I was really stressing out with all of the new updates of getting a full-time job and things I just found myself rapidly running out of time. was getting really stressed about it but luckily something worked out along the way so I do still plan on reading this at some point just not quite right now and I will leave a link to the myth take instagram down in the description box because there is a live show for this so if you have read it or if you want to hear other people's thoughts then you can go and check that out if you want to so if i shimmy along over here for a second let's get into the stats so in july i managed to read 14 books with a total of 3266 pages averaging at 105 pages per day for my ratings i had one one star one two star three three stars five four stars and four five stars which is a lot of five stars for me as for the formats this one gets a little bit more complicated I guess because there was a lot of doubling up. So I had four physical books, three graphic novels, two of which were also read physically and one as an ebook, three ebooks and one arc which was also read as an ebook, and then four audiobooks, two of which I also read along with physically and two of them were just entirely audible. So a few instances of doubling up there with those but it did lead to me reading more than I usually would within a month which is a great time. <laughs> So I'm actually just going to jump right in with the arc that I received. This one just dropped in my email one day and I thought it sounded pretty interesting, so I gave it a go. This one is called The Black Kids by Christina Hammonds Reed. It's a YA contemporary based around the events of the Rodney King riots. So in this book, we follow a girl called Ashley who is living her best teenage life in her final year of school, but the events of the Rodney King riots are happening in the background and it's pretty much just about that kind of privilege which Ashley has in being able to ignore that, but also the consequences that it does have on her because even though she's not directly affected and she does have the privilege of being able to ignore it to some extent she is also from that point onwards dubbed one of the black kids and that title is very much placed on her that is how people suddenly see her and I really liked this book for the amount of things it confronts because this tackles a lot within its pages but it does so in quite a natural way. So we flip between past and present and all of the past memories tend to have some inkling of systematic racism or ingrained racism which was kind of ignored in sidelines because it might have been her friends that said it and she didn't really want to confront them about it whereas now they have much more meaning and just kind of reflect how these small moments do contribute to the bigger problem. But then as I said we do also confront her own privilege in that she has been wealthy enough to be able to just ignore a lot of the problems that people have and also the prejudice that she has kind of internalised herself and puts that judgement on other people. It raises a lot of interesting questions such as the protection that parents try to lay on their children and whether that is doing more harm than good and also whether you should reevaluate your friendships, whether it's worth keeping up with a friendship or whether it's just better to acknowledge when it's probably best to let it go. And then alongside all that I genuinely do think that this is one of the most authentic representations of teenage life that I've ever read. Now that is coming from somebody who doesn't typically read young adult contemporary so I don't know how that comparison would stand stand up to other books but in all of my experience this does seem really genuine it seems seamlessly done and then one thing which blew my mind is how this book ends now obviously I'm not going to give spoilers but this book doesn't end in a way that you would expect it to it does have a satisfying ending but it does have quite a few strands of the story which wouldn't necessarily be seen as a good thing but then it does still manage to convey that tone of everything will be okay in the end and still manages to give you a satisfying ending without being too conveniently wrapped up in a nice little bow which I was really impressed with because I don't know how 
but it just felt right. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed this book and I want to see more people hyping it up because I haven't seen too many people talking about it. So if this does interest you at all, please do go and check it out. It's a really quick read. I'm going to be pushing this into the hands of many people. So I think I rated this one four stars. I do have a review for it on Goodreads and if I have written any reviews on Goodreads, I will leave a link to those down below as well. Really, really enjoyed it. Next up, we have The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This one is a character-driven sci-fi and doesn't really have too much of a plot. We follow a range of characters, but I guess we're aligned with a woman called Rosemary who joins the Wayfarer, expecting quite a chilled life, but they're offered the chance of a lifetime to build a tunnel in space and if they manage to, they will earn a lot of money and be able to live the rest of their life in peace. As you might imagine, not quite as easy as that, but like I said, very character driven. It's a very slow moving book. You must get at least halfway through this book before anything even closely resembling action even begins. And I don't typically mind that, but for some reason this book just didn't click for me. I feel like it was very interesting to read in that this is basically a big thought experiment for Becky Chambers. You can tell that she really enjoys the world building in this and building the characters that live in this world because she basically takes human norms, takes them out of our context, puts them in a sci-fi setting and then just plays with them. So this does have a lot of LGBTQ plus representation in that a lot of the species have different gender dynamics, there's a female-female relationship at its centre, and a lot of the things that we would consider normal is confronted and put in a different light. So it was really interesting to read that way, but unfortunately for me, there's something about this book which just didn't click. I could have very easily put this down halfway through and not returned to it without being too sad about that. I would have been sad about me not enjoying it as much as everybody else seems to, but I wouldn't have lost sleep over it. And I very nearly did DNF it, but I picked up the audiobook and honestly I think that's the only reason I actually finished this. I can't say I'm too inclined to continue the series, however I might do at some point if I'm in the mood for Becky Chambers writing, because she does have a very particular tone to it. It's kind of conversational, but not too much. I don't know how to explain it any better than that. But yes, I did find this an interesting concept. I just could have done without it too. So I wasn't too in love with it, which is such a shame because so many people recommended this to me. And as I keep saying, I do want to get into sci-fi more. So I did give it a go, but just not for me. I did rate it three stars, but yes didn't quite go as well as I wanted it to, I'm afraid. <laughs> so then we get on to the big books that I read in terms of size because we have this one which is Greek Myths by Jean from Jean Bookish Thoughts. Oh my goodness, so excited that she's come out with this and it's also illustrated by Katie Ponder. If you know Jean's channel at all, you'll know that she loves Greek mythology and she studies the ancient classics, so it was about time that she came out with a book related to it. And this is basically an illustrated Greek myth collection. It is absolutely stunning. The artwork in this is just, oh. I love the style of it. This is the Eros and Psyche page and I love how each of the gods have a section about sacred symbols which you can see here because I feel like that's a really effective way of introducing further tidbits of information and the beginnings of stories which you can then look further into if you wanted to. I really appreciated how this book was written because even though it is for a younger audience it's not condescending, it's not too simplistic. People my age and above can still enjoy it and it also doesn't romanticise the nature of some of the relationships in this which I found a lot of Greek myth interpretations do. So I really appreciated that because it kind of just said it as it is without being too blunt, without being too explicit I guess and it just managed to handle it in a really effective way. I also really like how towards the end of this book there is a section on how we actually know about the Greek myths so the artwork that some of them are engraved into, the remnants of the stories left behind and I've not seen that in a Greek myth collection before but I found it a really interesting addition because I feel like it's going to encourage a lot of younger readers to actually look further into it and have a starting place of where to look if they do want to find out more about Greek mythology so I just think this is a really good introduction to Greek mythology. Would highly recommend checking this out if you are into Greek mythology or you want to get into it. And then for another big graphic novel we have The 100 Nights of Hero by Isabel Greenberg. Now this one is actually a retelling of 1001 Nights and this ended up being a lot darker than I imagined it to be. Not to an extreme, it does have this kind of dry humour to it and there's a lot of events in it which are really quite awful. There are actually quite a few trigger warnings for this book so I'll leave them down in the description box. But you can kind of tell with the basic synopsis because this book starts with two men having a bet that one of them can seduce the other's wife. So one of the men leaves for 100 Nights with the challenge to his friend 
friend to seduce his wife within these 100 nights and if he manages to he wins the wife the palace all that kind of thing so as you can imagine pretty grim but it turns out that this wife is actually in love with one of her serving maids hero hero overhears them making these plans and so they come up with a plan to keep them at bay for 100 nights doing so via storytelling hence the retelling of 1001 nights so this is very much a book that is stories within stories within stories and i absolutely loved all of them but i didn't even realize while i was reading it it was always when i read the very last line of each story when i realized how much they'd actually hit me and then when i got to the end and found out how they were all connected I was just mind blown. This is very much a me kind of story. Even though this is a direct retelling of 1001 Nights, there are also tidbits and references to other stories in there. One of the stories in here is a direct retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses fairy tale and I just found it really interesting seeing all of these stories and references connect together. We also had a celestial theme. There were themes of storytelling tied in with magic, which is just one of my favourite themes. So this was a book very much for me. <laughs> I didn't quite rate this five stars purely because some of the stylistic choices I did find quite difficult to bear with sometimes, such as the really tiny squiggly font that it uses for the writing. And also with the sketchy style to it, if there was ever too much on one page it did seem quite overwhelming. But overall I did really really enjoy it. All of the stories in it kind of made a point out of the treatment of the women in it because, as I said, quite awful things happen to these people in these stories. But overall I really really enjoyed it and if your tastes are similar to mine at all and you really want a graphic novel to read, I would highly recommend this one. I don't know if I am going to try out any of Isabel Greenberg's other books because I do think it was the overall storytelling theme of this book which I really enjoyed rather than the artistic style or anything so it would depend what else she comes out with in the future and I know that she does have one related to the Brontes which I might try at some point but I'm really not sure. If you have read it then do let me know if you think I should but this one got 4.5 stars from me. Really really loved it. So then as a final kind of addition to the end of this I did also start reading Assassin's Quest but I am still currently reading this and the majority of the review will be in my August wrap up. But I did get about 250 pages in. I'm now maybe 400 and something pages in. This is the final book in the Farsia trilogy. I'm reading it for Elder Lingalong and it's just it's winning me over in every single way possible. I'm so invested in this world, in these characters. The relationships are so complicated and it's just rising in intensity every single time I turn a page. It's blowing my mind slightly because despite this being the final book in a series, it's still managing to feel fresh and new and introduce new things to the world without being too late in the story because it is a pretty chunky book so I've been having a great time reading this. I did just want to quickly tack this on the end of this wrap up because as I said I did start it in July but I will have a more in-depth review in my August wrap up and we're also doing a live show for this on the 16th I think it is so stay tuned for that if you do want to hear more about this book. I will also be finishing this in my weekly vlog that's coming on Monday. The same goes for Star Daughter which I mentioned towards the beginning of this video so you'll hear my full thoughts soon but just know that I'm really really enjoying this. So I think that's it for this video. I feel like this was considerably shorter than my first one. Did not even those out at all. <laughs> Let me know if you've read any of the books I've mentioned in this video or what your favourite book of July was. As I mentioned before there is a part one to this video so if you haven't seen that the link is down in the description box. But for now I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing so. Down in the description box you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and all the bookish stuff as well so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.